Welcome to TradePro. This is the release and tutorial video for the newest TradePro trading strategy script. This one's called the Super Trend Plus Stochastic Plus EMA Strategy, and it's the 13th trading strategy script to be released on my Patreon page, um, along with two additional indicators. If you're interested in getting access, you can check out my Patreon link in the description down below. But for this video, I will go over the strategy that this script is using and also all the different customizable settings that this has built in. So let's get into things. First, let's cover what strategy is being used to take entries with this script. The rules for a long position are as follows. Price must be over the 200 period exponential moving average or moving average of your choice. The super trend must be green and the stochastic K must go into the oversold territory below the 20 level. So we can see there's a long position opened here. We have the green super trend prices over the 200 EMA and the stochastic K goes into the oversold territory here. We can see the next long entry right here with the green super trend prices over the 200 EMA and stochastic K goes into the oversold territory. Now for a short position, price must be under the 200 EMA with a red super trend and an overbought stochastic K, okay? So that's the basic rule for any entry that the script is taking. Of course, there are many different customizable parts to this and different ways to do stop loss, take profit targets, um, and adjust the indicators themselves, which we'll get into now. Now I'll open up the settings and we'll take a look at everything one by one, starting up top here with the super trend settings where you can enable it or disable it as part of the strategy's criteria. You can change the length and the multiplier and then you can also decide if you want there to be multiple entries per super trend color flip or if there can only be one. So that here you can kind of read about it as well, but you can decide if the strategy will be allowed to take multiple entries per super trend or if it needs to change color in between each entry. Now, next we have the stochastic settings, so you can change the K length, K smoothing. Um, you don't need to do the D because it's not even part of the strategy. You can also change the condition for where the oversold and overbought territory is, or you can just get rid of the stochastic altogether as part of the strategy, which will be interesting because then it's gonna take entries based on just the super trend and the EMA, which is not favorable for the results here. So we'll switch it back there. Um, here, next we have the enabling of the EMA filter. So um, the 200 period EMA is what it's set at by default, but you can change it to whatever EMA you want or just get rid of it altogether. Clearly having it there uh, makes the results quite a bit better in this case. Next is the ability to enable long entries, enable short entries, or choose just one of the two. You can also restrict entries to a certain date range to back test on. You can also restrict to certain days of the week and certain times of day. You can also skip if the estimated commission is greater than the estimated profit. There's additionally an RSI filter where you can set certain parameters and conditions um, to filter out trades, and you can skip the entry of previous trades unrealized profit reaches a certain percent. Now on to probably one of the most important parts of the strategy settings, and that's the stop loss strategy as well as the take profit strategy section. So I'll start up here with the stop loss strategy options. Uh, if we drop this down, you can see there are a few different ways to place the stop loss, whether it be ATR based, moving average of an ATR based, percent based, tick based, or disabled. And then I chose for the ATR based stop loss placement that I want it to place the stop loss six times the ATR our value so that you can choose right here and of course if you're doing percent based you know you can choose how many percent away you want your stop loss to be from your entry price and etc etc with the other types um, there's also the ability to enable a dynamic stop loss so if you want the stop loss to be a trailing stop loss or you want it to move to break even at a certain point you can enable this and then choose what 
parameters you want to set for that stop loss. So if you, let's just say you want it to move to break even at a certain point, then you can say, okay, I want the stop loss to move once price has gone 1% in my favor or whatever you want to set, um, you can have the stop loss move to break even at a certain point or trail it, whatever you want to do. But um, you hopefully get the point um, of that section there. Now for the take profit strategy, there are a few different options. I have it set at risk multiplier right now, but you can choose between that, ATR based, moving average ATR based, percent based, tick based, or disabled. For risk multiplier, I have it set right here to one, meaning it's going to be using a one to one risk to award ratio. So it's just gonna be placing the take profit target the same distance that is placing the stop loss. And up here, I have it set to six times the ATR for the stop loss. So so that's also going to be the take profit target is six times the ATR from the entry price. Um, you can set all those specifics if you want to do the other options um, in this area. Now, next, we have the ability to close position early if the price crosses moving average of your choice. There's also the ability to close position after a certain number of minutes and also close the position on reaching the end of the trading session. Now let's talk about the brand new feature of this trading strategy script that hasn't been seen on any of the past ones, and that is the ability to enable dollar cost average entries. So instead of having it enter the entire position all at one price, you can have a multi-stage entry. And I'm gonna go over the different parts of this, but I'll start out by just visually showing you what is happening here. So let's take a look at this most recent trade on Euro against the US dollar, where the dollar cost average functionality was utilized. So we see the initial entry right here on this candle, and it says enter short for that first entry. But then we see another entry right here, the enter short safety first. So that's the first dollar cost average entry represented by this orange line. That's that level where it's going to enter that dollar cost average entry. And then this orange line is the next time that it would enter into another dollar cost average entry to get a better average entry price. But that one was never triggered. What we see here with this blue line is the new average entry price after that dollar cost average entry is taken. And what happens down here with the take profit target looks kind of strange, but what it's doing is it's moving the take profit target much closer to maintain the one to one risk to reward ratio as the average entry price is better now. Okay, and you don't need to have it move the stop loss or I mean the take profit target. What you can do with the settings is decide if you want it to move or not. So let's uh, turn that off actually. So it says maintain take profit distance. I have it set to yes. If we say no, then we'll see visually what happens. This take profit target is gonna drop back down and stay at its original position and we see results change as well. So profit factor does go down, percent profitable goes down, net profit actually goes up a little and the max drawdown goes up drastically. So we'll just go back to those initial settings I had um, here and go through the different parts here and they're kind of read each of these so it all makes sense. Um, one important thing to note is that you do need to have the activate custom order size settings turned on um, for this functionality to work. Now let's cover each part of this customizable dollar cost average entry function, um, starting at the top with the max safety order count, which I have set at three. And that is the number of safety orders a strategy should submit in addition to the entry order, noting that the more safety orders you use, the more money is going to be locked into each trade. Then there's the first safety order size percentage. So what this is, is the size of the first safety trades position expressed as a percentage of the initial entry order. For example, setting this to 100% will result in the first safety trade to use the same position size as the entry order. If you set it to 200%, then it would use double the size of the entry order for that first dollar cost average entry, um, et cetera. So each additional safety trade will scale its position size based on the value set in the safety order volume scale configuration below. Here we have the safety order volume scale set to two right now and the, the scale at which to increase each safety orders size. So for 
example with the safety order size set to 100 percent and the safety order or volume scale set to two the strategy will place the following safety orders one safety order number one with position size equal to the initial order size and co as configured in the safety order size two safety order number two with position size double the size of safety order number one and three safety order number three with position size double the size of safety order number two and so on so first safety order price deviation this is going to be the percentage difference in price to place the first safety order at so where is that first dollar cost average entry going to be how far away from your initial entry for example if you set this to three percent the first safety order will be placed three percent below for long entries or three percent above for short entries of the entry price of that trade each subsequent safety order, second, third, etc., will be placed below or above the first safety order. How far they are spaced out depends on the value set in the safety order step scale. See below. So here's the safety order step scale right now set to one. And that is the scale at which the safety trades should be spread out. For example, if you set this to one, the strategy will submit the following safety orders for a long position. Safety order number one, place 3% below the entry price as configured in the price deviation to open safety orders. Two, oops. Safety order number two, place 3% below safety order number one, 6% below the entry price. Safety order number three, place 3% below safety order number two, 9% below the entry price. If you were to use a scale of two, the end of the orders would be like the following. Safety order number one, place 3% below the entry price. Safety number two, place 6%. 2 times 3% below the safety order number 1, and then 9% 9, 9 below the entry price. 3, safety order number 3, place 12%, 2 times 6% below safety order number 2, 21% below the entry price, etc. And then we already went over this part, the maintain the take profit distance, so whether or not the uh, take profit target is going to adjust throughout the trade. And then the keeping the orders beyond stop loss set to no. If enabled, the strategy won't submit any safety orders that would go beyond the stop loss. If a dynamic stop loss is used, so something like a trailing stop loss, every time the stop loss is moved, the strategy will assess if there are any safety orders that are now beyond the stop loss as a result of that move. If it finds any unfilled safety orders beyond the stop loss, it will cancel those automatically. So um, essentially any um, dollar cost average orders um, are canceled if the stop loss comes and moves beyond them um, so that they're no longer needed, essentially. You know, the stop loss will be hit before any of those dollar cost average um, entries would be hit, and then they're just going to cancel those orders so that they don't cause any problems. All right. So that's pretty much it for the dollar cost averaging this awesome new feature here. One other thing to point out about this, though, is with the total tr closed trades number. So 257 is not accurate, actually. So if we take a look here at our widget, we also see number of longs opened 65, number of shorts opened 76. Those two numbers don't add up to 257. So this has to do with the multiple entries being taken um, with the dollar cost average entries. So this is kind of a discrepancy here. Um, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but the reason it's like that is just because the uh, dollar cost average entries are being counted in the total closed trades number. Um, which is making it seem like more trades are happening than they really are. So this is not testing 257 different trades. This is actually testing, let's see, 65 longs total and 76 shorts total. Um, so hopefully that part makes sense as well. Um, and if we look at our list of trades, you can also see that the way that they kind of record trades, it's not going to show all of the different orders properly here which is why on the screen we kind of have it showing them so if let's say all of the orders get filled you can take a look on your screen and see where those were filled at what point along the way were those orders filled um, since this doesn't really tell you the full story about it all right so beyond that not a lot more here to show we just have some alert sections where you can set up automated trading or um, just simple alerts whatever you wish to do but um, that's going to wrap things up for this one thank you guys for watching and uh, have a great day